everyone. My name is Nithya and you are at Daybreak Stitchery, which is my floss tube channel. This is a channel all about cross stitch and I usually check in at the end of each month just to show you what I've been working on. Um, I have been, this is a jam packed video today because I had to take a lot of notes for this one. We're doing giveaways. I'm announcing right away. We're going to do that right away. The giveaways from last time. I've got finishes to show you, including a big one that I was almost done with and posted on Instagram yesterday. Um, some whips, a big restart, um, one new start because I'm doing some gift stitching, um, more giveaways today, and then uh, big time plans because I'm starting a sale in January. I have that kitted up and I did a classic Colorworks conversion. So the called for DMC and classic Colorworks I'm going to show you and then a couple other sales and my WIPGO 2022 board. So we're going to get right into this because there's a lot to talk about today. Okay, first I want to announce the giveaway um, winners from the last time. Thank you for um, entering and commenting and I enjoy reading your comments and connecting with you via comments. Um, so I was giving away three patterns of the Peruvian flare pattern I Apayak, which is Temple of the Moon. And the three people who won that one are Stitch for Joy, Khalifa, congratulations, Patty Miller, congratulations, and um, Don, Dona, Donahi Ale, Alejandra, um, congratulations. So for this pattern and then for all my other giveaways, I'm going to use your contact info um, either on the Google form that you filled out or I will find you on Instagram. And I will, um, after editing the video today, I'll be online. So I'll be sending out all of your files. Um, these are all PDF patterns. Okay. Um, Second pattern, I'm giving away three copies of Sikan Bird, also by Peruvian Flair. And the three winners of that one are Maru Mi, Miriam, congratulations. Catherine, Neat and Knot, congratulations. And then um, Sarah, Moncross, congratulations. And then um, there was only one person who entered for uh, Cats Reflection Sampler. So it's going to you, Meg. Congratulations, um, Books and the Moon. And then the big one, I was giving away a copy of um, Kind Kapal, which is by Java Cross Stitch on Etsy. And this is the um, pattern for the sale that I'm starting in January, but no pressure to join the sale or anything like that. That one goes to ZJ Stitches, Zina. Congratulations. So I used um, Random Comment Picker. And then I also had to use the Google Random Number Generator because the Random Comment Picker has trouble, like for the patterns where I was giving away multiples, it would keep reselecting the same name as the winner. It wouldn't choose other winners. So I assigned everybody numbers and did that. And that's how we did it. So um, again, I'll be, you should be getting those today via email. Maybe just keep an eye on your spam folder in case, you know, my email address is unfamiliar to your system and it filters it out. And then if like by tomorrow morning, if you haven't received it, let me know. And then also everybody, please respect the wishes of the designers, which is to not, you know, share out those patterns. They're, they're copyrighted and they're for you. I bought those or they were donated by the um, designers. So they're for you <laughs> to use um, and not be copied and all that. Okay. We're going to do another giveaway, um, a, a really fun one, <laughs> another really fun one at the, um, at some point, either at the end or right before the end of the video. So um, stay tuned for that. Okay, so let's talk finishes because I have a few really fun ones to show you. Um, okay, so one of them I actually made a, just a couple days ago. I finished a cross stitch journal and I made a whole separate video talking about that. So if you're curious about how to do cross stitch journal um, or like one idea, a couple of ideas for how to do one, you, you could make it your own. I highly recommend everybody stitch smalls to put in a journal. It was really fun. What I will show you right now, you should really go to the other video to check that out because I don't have any um, stitching to show. I left my journal upstairs since I made that other video, but I will show you a closer look at the fabric and thread, um, one of the threads that I use it, used for it. So I used Picture This Plus. This is Da Vinci, and it basically is pretty true. It's a little bit darker than what you're seeing. It's like a li lilac-y, lavender purple, but it also has these like tinges of like a orangey coral pink in there too. It's very pretty. And when I first received it, I used, this is like a little eight and a half by um, 12, like the smallest size you can get on one, two, three stitch. When I first received it, I wasn't too sure what I would do with it. 
but just like most picture this plus fabrics, it comes in handy at some point in another so, or another. So I used it for um, stitching smalls for this journal. And my new favorite color combo is this Da Vinci, um, this kind of purple with this variegated thread. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the variegation. It's like a purple and um, dark blue variegated thread. It's such a mess. I haven't like wound it back up after using it. You're not catching any of the purple, but it's basically, it's like a mix of it. So it's DMC, it's color variations and it's 4240. It's called Midsummer Night and it's so pretty. And it variegates between basically like the blue is like a DMC 336 navy blue. And the purple is almost like DMC 550, um, like, pur like the purplest purple that DMC has. I love this so much. And it goes great because of the darker shade of purple on this lighter um, fabric. It just, I love it. It's, I'm ready to stitch something. I got to find a monochromatic piece to stitch with that combo. So check out the other video and you'll see some really cute smalls in that one. They came from a um, pattern by two by two stitch art on Etsy. It was a Quaker's um, like a big Quaker's piece, but I just stitched individual motifs from it. Okay, let's get to the really good finishes. Okay, so I finally finished Quaker Autumn Quaker Seasons by um, Bygone Stitches. This was a really, really fun project to stitch. And um, I didn't use any of the called for colors. I did my own colors. I used four, five colors from Threadworks. And um, let me show you what I did. I'm so excited about this. So here it is. All finished. I'm going to hold it up a little closer so you can see. I just love it. It's got so many tiny details that I really didn't notice until I start had to start stitching them. And um, I'll show you one thing. Gosh, there's so much to show you with this one. Okay, should we do colors first? Let's do colors and fabric first. So this fabric is Witch's Brew by XJU Design, which is a very pretty, it's like a purpley gray. And then it has these like um, ink splatter kind of uh, motifs sort of scattered all over it. It's really, really pretty. And I think it shows off all these colors really nicely because they're all sort of, except for this, everything else does have sort of a muted tone to it. I just love it. I love how, how it turned out. And these are the color thread. So that was Witch's Brew. It's a 36 count. And I was stitching two over two with Threadworks. Check these colors. They're all going to be washed out, I bet, because um, I don't know how the, how the light's going to do today. I have a different lighting situation today to try to brighten things up a bit. But let me show you what everything is. So this, where I, where I stitch the word autumn right in the middle, that is Threadworks 1077, and it's called Pottery. Very pretty, variegated. It's got like terracotta mixed in with like this peachy um, orange. So, so pretty. Hang on a sec. I got to take my sweatshirt off. It's getting too warm in the basement. We finally had to turn the heat on. It was like in the lower 20s yesterday. It's finally getting cold here. Okay, the teal that you're, gosh, I love this teal so much. This green teal, oh, I'm holding that upside down. This green teal that you're seeing, that is Threadworks 10244. And it's called Peacock Feathers. It's very pretty teal called dark, dark teal. And then for all the animals, let me see if I can point, there's so many animals in this one. So like that squirrel, the cat, even those grapes up top. For all those kind of smaller motifs, I used Threadworks. These are all Threadworks. So 11215. This is called Marooned. And this is gorgeous. I'm actually using this for another project. There's an Owl Forest project that's a, an acorns sampler. And I'm using this for that. So this is going to be going right back to that project but I pulled it out for this one. It's like a maroon transitioning to brown, transitioning to gray. So, so pretty. And then what's left? Oh, I used, this was actually my least favorite color of all of them, but then um, I, I grew to love it. It's this one right here for this motif. 
it's got that beautiful mustard yellow in it. It's 1040, Threadworks 1040. I think it's called Shanghai Nights. And um, it's got this like olive green going into mustard yellow, going into like a maroon. And this does some amazingly beautiful things. Like, uh, you're probably not going to see it on this video, but like where the maroon transitions to the mustard, it, it's just so pretty. It's such a gradual, beautiful transition. Very, very pretty. And then I'm missing one. Oh, that rust orange. Like in this motif up here, that kind of rusty orange and brown that's showing up in some of the larger motifs. That's this one. It's Threadworks 1042, which is Desert Sunset. And this one I love so much. I'm I'm it's gonna make another appearance today because <laughs> I'm using I restarted a big project and um I'm using it for that. So I'm gonna give you one more look at this. I just love this so much. And even though it's seasonal stitching, I am gonna find try to find a frame for this and put it up permanently in the living room. I just love it so so much. I had fun yesterday when I finished when I put the last stitch in <laughs> last night. I, Steve was sitting on the other end of the couch and he was like, oh, what you doing over there? And I just tucked in my last stitch. I said, I just finished this. And I showed it to him and we were both having fun just looking at all the different motifs, just kind of searching for what was in there. My favorite is, no, it's hard to pick favorites. I love this little pumpkin <laughs> right there. And I love, there are a couple of little apples, like that apple right there. Did everybody see, um... Oh gosh, I can't remember if it's a recent video by Abby Bella Stitch or if it's an older one because I've been watching some of her older ones. She did this amazing thing. She had she it was a Halloween stitch where there was a moon in it and she used a fancy floss, a variegated floss, but the way she stitched is instead of rows, she did like this circular pattern. So she like stitched around and then did the next inner round and then came around. It looked so beautiful because the shading was kind of like circular then the variegation was in these like rings all around it was so so beautiful um so I tried it was fun with because all of these are variegated flosses it's really fun to play with variegation sometimes so like on this little apple it won't show that much I tried to make it where one side was darker and one side was lighter and I used that kind of like stitching it around and then coming in and then stitching until I got to the other side. And it does look like there's kind of light shining on one side of it and it's dark, the other part is in shadow. That was fun. So very happy, very happy to have finished this. And thanks for all the encouragement too, while stitching on this. I almost, I was, when I was making my notes for this video, like over the past couple of days, I've just been kind of jotting stuff down that I wanna add. And while I was making those notes, I just kept telling myself, you're not gonna finish it. <laughs> This is going to be another project that just gets carried over another whip that gets carried over another month. But I just took a look at it while I was working on it last night and it was so close. It was so, so close. So I just stayed up and did it. So very, very happy with that one. Okay. Um, I have another really cute finish. This was an unexpected one. I didn't know I was going to start this, but I picked up two projects. I know I said I wasn't going to do any new starts. And then I did picked up two gift stitching items and I finished one and it turned out pretty cute actually. So it comes from this. It's um, a bee in my bonnet slash it's so Emma pattern from Fat Quarter Shop. And it's called Stitchy Stars. And it looks like this. And when I saw it, I thought, ooh, to me, that looks like a bookmark. If you can stitch it on a fabric that's small enough. And on 18 count Ada, it, it makes a perfect bookmark. So there are seven of these motifs, but I only stitched four. I picked four of them. And right away, okay, so when I saw this pattern, it's like, see how it's kind of patriotic? I mean, it is patriotic. Let's just say it is patriotic. And then it's um, got these quilt patterns on it, right? It 100% made me think of my friend Melanie, who is a writer and super avid reader. And her her pandemic hobby, like in the heart of the, you know, the, the part where we were all kind of so cooped up and getting stuck in the house. It's still going, pandemic's still going on, but you know what I mean. Um, 
she she just had to get out of the house so she would just go on these long drives by herself and she's from rural illinois she's from the next county down um kankakee county which is very rural lots of farms um lots of barns with barn quilts and her favorite thing to do was to take these drives and go take pictures of barns and barn quilts and she made me like a little calendar with those she just has so many pictures she doesn't know what to do with them she made me like a little wood block and put a picture on there so this made me think of her and her like kind of um fascination with photographing barn quilts and then when I when it when I thought it could make a good bookmark I thought okay I'm gonna make this for Mel are you ready because I'm pretty proud of this this is like something I never thought I would do and I know it's simple but still it's just so cute Are you seeing it all or is it washed out? There we go. So see how I chose just four of the motifs. And then um, it's got uh, just a scrapbook, kind of like a cardstocky scrapbook paper that I cut to size on the back. I used the called for DMC on it. And then um, I used a 20 count Petit Point it's like a bay, technically it's a beige color fabric with those little polka dots on there. And I don't know, I don't know where we're going to get the best picture of this because it looks kind of washed out, but I think you're catching it. I also did a teeny tiny whip stitch all the way around the edge, which quite frankly was the hardest part of this to do those tiny whip stitches and not have it fray while I was working on it. Um, because I love that it's DMC 321, which is that bright red. I just, it's so pretty. I just love looking at that. So I, right away, I thought, oh, I got to reuse this around the edge and make that bright color pop again. So I hope she like, I think she appreciates crafts and stuff. We actually, um, during the pandemic, we did a really fun thing. There's that creative bug. Have you heard of that? It's like these online, you can get it through your public library, or at least around here you can, where it's like a whole, it's like a bunch of floss tubes, but for all different kinds of crafts, just like tutorials on crafts. So we, we um, did that over Zoom. We would like have one of those videos just playing and the two of us would be doing little crafty things. So she appreciates crafts. So I think she's going to really like this. And let me tell you, this pattern I feel like it's such a versatile pattern. You can play, if you play with colors on it, I'm telling you what, I'm making a bunch of people some bookmarks because this was really easy to do for anything that stitch. It's a start and finish, right? So I started it this month and I was able to finish it. That's amazing for me because I rarely ever start and finish something in the same month. But you could do this, you could change the colors. Um, you could pick a person's favorite colors and stitch bookmarks. I'm thinking of making two for my nephews for Halloween because over Halloween, I send them little like care packages. They're little, they're little kids, but they love getting stuff in the mail. They get really excited to get stuff in the mail. So this year I sent them a, like a little, a little envelope with like some stickers, like a packet of googly eye, like sticky googly eyes that they could stick on things just little like knickknacks like that I'll put in. And I thought, oh, what if I stitch this in like Halloween colors and send, put that in their envelope for next year? That'd be fun. Um, I have another idea. I'm going to stitch. Um, well, I'll tell you about that's in plans. We'll talk about that in plans. This will come back in plans. Anyway, you could totally adapt the colors to this. Oh, I hope I didn't show. I may have to cut out a little snippet there if, if I opened this up and showed the pattern. I hope not. But anyway, um, you could totally change the colors on this and make it a, it would be a good gift item to do. So stitchy stars, it's, um, from fat quarter shop. It's a com, uh, com, what is it called? Collaboration between it's so Emma stitchery and, um, Lori Holt, me and my bonnet. So very good. That was a good find. I feel like that's going to come in handy again and again. Um, so that's. That's finishes. I feel like that's a pretty good productive month. A cross stitch journal, a gift, and then a uh, um, one of my whips. I can take off my list of way too many whips. <laughs> oh, and by the way, on um, my bookmark, I, I so I stitched it two over two. I used the called for DMC, and I had to do two over two, even though it's twenty count fabric, because you're not going to notice it because I don't think we'll be able to get close enough to see. So on that first, that top motif was the first one that I stitched and I tried it one over one and I actually kept, some of it is still one over one right now. I didn't pull it out and it was going fine, 
until I got to this, it's DMC 3750, that dark blue. When I started using that one over one, you could just see everything. You could see all the fabric behind it. There was like hardly any coverage at all. So I just said, nope, I'm going to have to use two strands. So I kept, I had already stitched some of those colors one over one. Um, I didn't pull those out. I left them. So if you're really, if you're nitpicky and look really close, you can kind of tell which ones are one, one strand and then all the rest of it I did in two. So two, yeah, two strands on 20 count. I like really kind of, it, and it was fine. It wasn't like, str I wasn't struggling to pull the needle through. It, it felt just like I was stitching on 18 count Ada, maybe because it's printed on and not dyed or something. I don't know. It worked fine with two strands on it. Okay, um, let's talk whips. I have three to show you. Um, I can't even believe I'm showing you this one right now. You're going to recognize it. Technically, it's a restart. I've This is my fourth restart on this project. I'm embarrassed to say. But I think I finally got it sorted out. <laughs> Gosh. Do you recognize this? You know what it is, right? It's this year's Modern Folk Embroidery 2021 Stitch Along. There we go. And um, I have started and stopped this so, so many times. This is my fourth fabric and color combo, but I do think I'm finally in a place where I like it and it's working up really fast. I spent about 14 days this month just on this, 14 evenings slash bits of weekend. So I couldn't fully finish. So this is basically um, January. This middle is February and this is March over here. So I did a little bit of everything. I couldn't fully finish one single month, but I got good chunks done of everything. So what am I using? Well, you're going to recognize the dark color because that is our little friend on um, Threadworks 1042 making another appearance. This is Desert Sunset. It's that orange and brown that I had just shown you from my autumn, um, the bygone stitches, Autumn Quaker. I just loved it so much. And I thought, okay, let me give this color combo another go. The blue is a DMC color variations. It's 4025. 4025 and it's called um caribbean bay i think it's all these different kind of bright blues very good it's very pretty and to tell you the truth it does look very watery doesn't it look like ripples and water i do find myself just looking at it a lot i love all the color different colors going on there so I think we've got a winning combo. The fabric is from a brand that I just loved on Etsy that I, I don't, I won't shop for anymore. They've got some issues, so I won't be talking much about the fabric, but it's a pale kind of tan fabric, which you can, so many people make pale tan fabrics. I'm sure if you like it, you can find it somewhere, somewhere else, but um, yeah. I, I hope to <laughs> keep going back to this. So it, this is going to sound silly maybe, but in Jacob's last video where he kind of talked a little bit about the new stitch along, he said it was going to be a reproduction sampler. And I'm not really crazy about reproduction samplers. So I kind of breathed a sigh of relief. I thought, oh my gosh, yes. Then I won't be tempted to get the new one. And then maybe like this next year, I can work on catching up on this one. I actually felt pretty proud of myself that I spent so much time on it this month because genuinely like November 1st through the 14th, this is what I stitched on basically, or no, probably the second, the second through the um, 15th, I stuck with this. So let me show you, I'm going to fold it up and I'll show you just the middle one a little bit closer so you can get a better look at what the colors look like. I really like that. I love this project so much. Every time, like I follow the hashtag, the MFE Sal 2021 hashtag on Instagram. So I just see it all day long. <laughs> like everybody's almost done, right? There's only a month left. It just looks so beautiful. So I've been wanting to like, I'm committed to doing, finishing one of these in my lifetime, but I just couldn't ever settle on the right colors. I hope, I hope this, this is it now. So that's that. I like how these um, 
Actually, this the March motif is really pretty too. Let me fold that up. They're all pretty. There's so many nice motifs in this. Like the multicolor tulips. It's kind of pretty. So yeah, I'm gonna be working on this one some. So it's I put it under whips. Technically, it's a restart. I did all so that's a testament to what a difference 18 count ADA makes because my original version of this was um sulky on 25 count which is not a good pairing but it took me 15 days just to stitch January um the effort like when I started it this I mean I'm not finished with any of them but I got a pretty good chunk done in 15 days I was able to hit all three months for a bit so pretty happy with that and I, yeah, I'm going to keep it up. Uh, it's 18 count Ada and I'm using two strands um, for that one. Okay, next one is also a restart. <laughs> I'm so happy with this one too. This has been a really fun one to restart. And I only worked on this one evening, so it stitches up really fast. So this is by Autumn Lane Stitchery and it's called Lovebirds. And it's from the February 2021 Just Cross Stitch magazine. And I actually saw, I first heard about it on their floss tube. They talked about it. I think they just started their floss tube in 2021, if that sound, does that sound right? And so I saw them when they were advertising um, this pattern in that magazine. And I had started it on a different fabric and color combo. And I just thought, well, that the style of it, because it's like a fract, fracture bird style pattern. And I thought, well, let me just see what it looks like. I had this barn. This is one of my go-tos. It's 18 count barnwood by Picture This Plus. It's a really pretty dark brown. I've used it on um, when I stitched a blue velvet by Ink Circles earlier this summer. I put that on a on this fabric too. So I just thought, well, let me just try a totally kind of, like it's a dark fabric. Let me try a few different. First of all, I tried, actually, you're seeing all my attempts because <laughs> I tried other colors, but I'm pulling those out. I tried a dark brown on dark brown, and it actually looked okay, but it, there wasn't enough of a contrast between the two browns, so I ditched that. Then I tried a brighter color. Um, this is a hand-dyed by Rolanda. It's like a limited edition skein. This is a bell swa down here. It's um, Precious Plum or Perfect Plum. Um, but there, was, there just wasn't enough of a contrast because this pattern is very lacy, so you really have to rely on... Um, all those like loops and little lacy bits, you have to be able to see the contrast between the fabric and the thread. So then I said, let me just pull out DMC Blanc, good old DMC Blanc. And I love it. I feel like it, it almost hit it, Like it's a February pattern. Um, it's supposed to be a Valentine's pattern, but doesn't it kind of look holiday now? It reminds me of like a gingerbread cookie with like icing on it. So pretty. So this is, you're seeing the one bird's head. Oh, I had, I actually pulled this out for um, D in honor of D's, um, D's 20 stitches in honor of their birthday this month. They're, um, they were doing a hashtag flip D the bird sal. <laughs> so um, I thought this would be a good time to restart this pattern with birds in it. I love it. I love how that's coming out. You know, just a, a simple white floss on a dark fabric does some wonders. Um, okay, so that technically was a restart too. So like next month for my end of month video, I'm doing a whip parade. So I've been going through all my whips and kind of organizing them and figuring out what order I want to put them in for that video. And I've marked several of them as restarts because as I look at them, I'm thinking like, what's the likelihood I'm going to come back to this? So now I'm, if I kind of, if something sparks in my mind about a fabric and color combo, I've been trying to restart those. So those two, the, both the Modern Folk Embroidery and the um, Autumn Lane Lovebirds were restarts from, from the ones that I had set aside to restart. Okay, one more whip to show you and then tons of plans and the next giveaway too. Okay, I before, kind of after Halloween, oh yeah, you're seeing the sparkles in that moon, I think. Um, before Halloween, no, after Halloween and before I picked up the Modern Folk Embroidery Sale. I was doing a little more work on my Hex Hotel by D's 20. And I just love this thing so much. So now I'm coming in, like the attic is well underway. And now we're coming into the, like the next sort of like the um, eaves above the next floor. And I added the moon and the moon is done in white etoile. 
So let me see if I can get in a little closer. I don't know if we'll get the sparkle to show. Oh yeah, there we go. You're seeing a little bit of it. It's shiny. I love it. I just keep staring at it. It's all right. I'm a big, big fan of Etoile. I, I think people love it or hate it. I love it. I just love looking at it. It's good. It's got nice sparkle to it. I just keep wanting to look at it. I think it looks so pretty. I mean, and even if it just shows up as white, it's a good contrast for what's going on here. So what are we using? We are using, okay, the fabric is by Fiberlicious. It's called Sunkissed. And it's a beautiful, like a purple and beige modeled fabric. I love this so much. See how it's like a beigey in some part, like tan, and then purpley in some parts. And then the DMC, I have a card with the colors because I'm not using all the called for, like DMC 310, of course. The black is DMC 310. The moon is Etoile, and there are going to be a few more motifs that are in Etoile. The white, like these eyes in the attic are um, just blanc or, or white. I'm not sure which one. And then um, I changed the two main colors. So there's supposed to be like a yellow green color. Um, I changed that to 958, DMC 958. It's a dark sea green. It almost kind of looks like a slimy green sort of, or like a glow in the dark green. And then the magenta is DMC 35. It's very dark fuchsia. And that was supposed to be some a purple of some kind. I just grabbed what I had in my stash. I have the called for somewhere. I just didn't want to go looking for it. So I grabbed what was nearby and I actually really like the look of it. And I think it looks good on this fabric too. It's like enough of a contrast where it looks good. So that is a really fun one. I, I'm, I want to keep coming back to this one and just keep adding, <laughs> work the house all the way down, you know, keep adding the layers to it. So this is Hex Hotel by D's 20 stitches and do you, I'm gonna have to get Krampus I think the new pattern I wasn't sold on it but then I was talking I asked um, my colleague at work who's the German teacher about it because Krampus I thought was a German like mythology folklore thing and she told me she said yeah it's actually um, I showed her the pattern we were both cracking up because it's just so funny and um she said it's like an alpine it's from the mountains. So it's more from like Austria and Switzerland, that part, that part of the German speaking side. And that's where she did her study abroad. So she, she, her family like talked about that. Basically he's like a monster that comes, um, for, to, comes to catch children who are behaving badly on the eve of, um, December 5th. And then if the kids are good, they put out these little, like their shoes um, underneath their bed or outside their door and they when they wake up there's candy and stuff in there or some kind of goodies in there so anyway I'm gonna have to think about getting that one I'm actually thinking about stitching it for her because she really liked she really liked it I pulled it up at work and showed her how she's like that is hilarious so um, she's getting married sometime in the next year so I thought that'd be kind of cute <laughs> to give that to her um that's whips. I think we are going to go into plans. Oh, actually, do you know what? I have one. I have a new start to show you. So technically I did two new starts because I have my bookmark and <laughs> you gotta watch it. There it is. I have my bookmark and then I have um, one more gift stitching item that I started on a splurge. I was really trying to do no new starts this month, but I just couldn't, I can't help myself. So I just had to pet these darn cottage garden samplings and all these cute patterns they're putting out lately. Snow and Love is this one. And when I saw it, I thought of my sister and her, my brother-in-law and the kids, my nephews. Look at that. This is them. This is their family. Those little guys just kind of being cute and cuddly and cheeky. This is basically like if you put humans in there, this is like they're, they take photos, family, like professional family photos. And this looks just like that. <laughs> so I want to stitch it for them and I want to really try to get it done for Christmas. We actually have our holiday, we do like a little holiday get together just with our, everybody here, the local people. And uh, we do it at my sister's house and we usually do it a little bit earlier than actual Christmas day, like probably a week earlier. So that means I got to get going <laughs> because it has to be done and I'm going to frame it myself. I'm not going to have it professionally framed. I actually may even just wait and ask what kind of frame she would want on it. Um, 
I'm not sure. If I find something really cute, I may just go ahead and get it. We'll see. I haven't even barely stitched it yet, so <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves. So let me show you what I've got so far. Here's what I've got so far. Just one little, one little kiddo in the corner. And then like you're seeing, it's pretty small, actually. Let me get this to a more manageable size so I can show you. So this snowflake right here, that's the middle point. And then I'm almost at the outer edge here. Probably goes out to like here. So it's really not that big. It stitches up. Let me see what it says. It's 152 by 148. So it's, it's not super, super large, but there's tons of fill in, which is good and bad. Um, oh no, I might have to sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. Like basically the snow people and their clothing. That's all fill in. It's not too bad though. Like for example, I did the hat on this little kiddo and that took hardly anything. It was a quick to stitch that up. This bow, like th this, I almost did in one evening. So it, it works up pretty quick. This dreamy fabric is color and cotton that I've been staring at for months and months. This whimsical my color and cotton. It's a 36 count linen. And I've just been thinking, I'm never going to get it because I don't have anything to stitch on it. Well, sure enough, something came up. I think it looks pretty good. It looks like, you know, when we have those icy blue, sunny, cold days right after snow. So I think it looks, it'll be just great. It has kind of a magical quality to it. It's got, it's, it is light blue, but it's got like these little bits of sort of a purpley blue in there too. It's very pretty. As usual, color and cotton is one of my go-to fabrics. So I just love it. So I got to get cracking on this basically. Like I think for December, I'm going to spend a lot. I got to finish this first. And then I hope to do a little bit more on my um, modern folk embroidery style too. But that will be the bulk of December, <laughs> just chipping away at those two things. Check the like the variegate, um, not variegation. This is two different colors of DMC that are creating the, the coloring on that bow. Isn't that pretty? She really has a gift when it comes to, is it Vienne who's um, cottage garden samplings? I can't remember the name of the designer she on here? I don't, oh yeah, Vienne. V, well, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Maybe I'll have to contact her and see how she pronounces it, but she spells her first name V-I-N-N-I-E-Y. -I -E um, she has a really great way with, um, of doing color. Like, do you see how in the middle of, um, this vest kind of garment here, it's a variegated, it looks variegated, right? It looks like it's alternating between, oh, it's in the vest too, in this garment. You're not going to catch it because my lighting is terrible. It looks like it's variegated between a dark red and a light red. And it's actually two alternating colors of DMC. Like she's made a pattern with it in there. It looks, it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. I'm stitching one other card at Cottage Garden samplings. It's Autumn Dream. That one's beautiful too. This one, I got to get really, I got to get going on it. And finish it so the called for fabric on this it's a picture of this plus it's alchemy is what she used um but like i said i wanted to go for something a little brighter and i've been dreaming of using this fabric on something so anyway so that's um snow in love by cottage garden samplings you know they have that new series that's coming up with like the woodland the season woodland seasons or something so far, that new pattern in that hasn't really spoken to me. I know I'm, I think I'm like the odd one out in that because everybody just loves it. It's like a fox with a, I like the little cabin in the back. I don't know, maybe I just, I think I need to see more of them. I could imagine myself maybe picking one of those depending on what the others look like, but I'm, I'd be curious to see what the autumn ones look like in that one. Anyway, um, that's the new start from this month. Oh. So the, a couple of, um, for Snow and Love, it's mostly DMC and I'm using the called for DMC, but for the main part, like this red, the, the main part of the red, the, it's a fancy floss from a um, vendor that I don't shop from. 
So I am substituting that with this. I have a Victorian motto red. Um, this is Brick Road, by Victorian motto. And um, that's what I'm substituting. And I like it so far that like that's what's being used for this little hat. I think it looks pretty good. I mean, it's not super variegated. It has like very subtle changes in it, but I'm, I can live with that. It's kind of a warm red, a warm red color. It's almost traveling into like a rust color, which, you know, I like that color, but it's, it is truly red. Okay. Um, plans, plans, plans. Cause I, that's what we do. We make lots of plans and then we'll see if they actually come to fruition. Um, first thing is I want to tell you, let's talk about Kain Kapal. So there is a fantastic pattern by Java Cross Stitch on Etsy. Era is the name of the designer. She's a wonderful person. And she has a traditional Indonesian ship cloth um, called a Kain Kapal. She's got a couple of patterns. We're using Kain Kapal number four, and I'm starting a sal in January. And it's going to be... Um, kind of like the cell that's going on with the Sarsi Girl pandemic sampler where I'm I'm taking the pattern and I'm I'm dividing it up month by month. So each month we're going to stitch on a part so that by the end of the year we have the finished product. So um it's a it's a cell so that means you can start it, you don't have to keep up with us. You can like I I don't even know if I'm going to keep up with it, but I'm going to try. I I'm hoping that I can keep up with each part since it's split up, um, or at least start each part during the month that I'm meaning to start it. So um, it's a lovely pattern. And what I have to show you today, I have it kitted up. So I'm going to show you what I'm using. And maybe that will give you some ideas if you are thinking of starting a couple of you are thinking of starting it with me. I haven't said anything on Instagram about it yet. I need to do that because I think there will be other people who are interested too. Also, because both the designer and the motifs are um, Indonesian, this is a great project for hashtag Stitch Asia. So if you're looking to increase your representation, what you stitch, this is a really good pattern for that. Um, I have put a link in the description below directly to that pattern on Etsy. So if you're looking to go pick it up, you can just use that link. You don't have to go searching for it. And um, I, I will say one thing. When you, when you get the pattern and you download it, the, it there, the cover, the first page has a stitched sample, a picture of it. So you can see that's basically what I'm going to be showing in this video somewhere up here. And then just take a deep breath when you look at the um, chart <laughs> because it is a little bit of like an overload to the senses. When you look at the chart, your first impression is like, what is going on here? Because there are symbols like everywhere. And it almost looks like it's a full coverage piece, but it is not a full coverage piece. What ERA has done is all of the white spaces in the background, like all of the white space in the background um, or off white or whatever color you choose, she has done half stitches all over that. And all those half stitches are charted in the chart. So it looks like every square in the, in the chart has a stitch in it. But really all that is, is it's those half stitches that are covering the background. I personally don't think I'm going to put in those half stitches. I'm going to make it a game time decision and just see. I think what I am going to for sure stitch is the red motifs. The motifs that are dark, they look like they're dark, um, maybe dark gray in the picture. But actually it's all different blues that are in this pattern. Ship cloths, those kind of balls, are traditionally red or blue. Um, the weaving in it. So she's used those same colors. I don't believe I'm going to do all that back stitching. I, I might, I might see how it goes and see, I might try a little bit of a sample and see what it looks like on the fabric I chose. So just like take a deep breath when you see that chart, that's what's going on. And I don't think you feel, you know, you shouldn't feel like you have to put in those half stitches. This is already going to be a little bit of a challenge for us because it's not a big pattern. It's only like 150 
by less than 150. It's a, it's a pretty small pattern, but there are some fractional stitches in it. That is new for me. So I'm excited to try those with you. That'll be a, a, an interesting exercise for us. There are half stitches. No, there are um, quarter stitches and three quarter stitches too, because it's where some of the motifs, have, they, she wants to make like an angled shape to them. And then they come down and have another angled shape. So um, lots of like angular things happening. So you achieve that with fractional stitches, I guess. So we will survive that together if you're stitching this with me. Okay, um, so I've kitted it up. So let me show you what I'm using. So my fabric, this is Picture This Plus, and the color is called opal. So it's not opalescent. It's not a sparkly, it doesn't have like the um, sparkly, you know, filaments through it. The actual color is called opal. And I'm like basically in love with it because it's like this sort of beigey, sandy color. Um, it's got like what kind of beige? It's not a warm brown beige. It's more of like a grayish purpley beige. So it's really, really pretty. And um, it's got like some nice subtle variegation. It looks sort of coffee dyed or tea dyed. So um, I think the colors will sit really nicely on it. So let me show you what the called for DMC looks like. It's very pretty. So this is what it's going to look like against the fabric. It's mostly blues. It's a lot of blues. It's a little bit of um, neutral and then some red too. So this is what that looks like. I'm trying to figure out how to get the light. There you go. Maybe you're kind of seeing that. Now in in the camera there, all these blues look the same, but they're all different. It's all, it's four... It's three different blues that are being used here. So let me show you what everything is. So this is 336 navy blue. This is 3750. Um, I don't know what it's called, but it's 3750. This is, this is the same color that was in my bookmark. This is 803. I'm missing one. There's a fourth blue. This is 823. That's a lovely dark, dark blue. So these are all the blues. They're probably looking very similar to um, my camera because I have poor lighting, but they are truly very different color. They're all different blues. And these are, <laughs> I've been kicking around with making floss tags. And this is the only paper I could find that looked sort of like a batik pattern, you know, Indonesian batik. It's like a um, wax print, right? It's stamped on with wax. It's kind of batiky, so. That's what I went with on that. Um, fun fact, are you, are you ready for a fun fact? So Indonesian batik um, has a connection with West Africa. So in West Africa, there's a very popular um, style of fabric called, it's in like the French word for it is just, is just wax, le wax. And it's, it's basically batik. It's like bright colors with lots of stamped repeated motifs on it. And um, in West Africa, like in places like Senegal and Togo, they even have like the motifs have symbolism. So you wear different motifs based on what message you want to convey to the world for that day. You know, like, um, you know, are you happy in your relationships? Are you looking for a new relationship? Are you um, f having a good day or bad? You know, there's all of these different meanings behind um, those fabrics. And in West Africa, they're called panya. And if you, um, all of us who are fans of Bisa Butler and her um, quilting art, she uses a lot of panya in her, um, in her artwork. Well, that ended up there from Indonesia because after the Dutch colonized Indonesia and then came to Africa and colonized in Africa, they they used those same fabrics. That, that fabric style kind of traveled and became super popular in West Africa. So there's a connection between Indonesia and West Africa. And um, I don't know if I have any interesting video. Usually I try to find some kind of cultural video to share with you on that. I have a French one, um, but it doesn't have subtitles on it. I use it when we talk about it in class. Um, but I'll see if I can find an article or something on it. It's super fascinating to read about Banya and like the inspiration for it. Okay, um, I was showing you colors. So... Okay, these neutrals. So one of these, new. this is 822. And this is 3770, that 
they look identical, but they're not. They're different. This is almost like a peachy, a very pale peachy. This has gray undertones in it. And there's one, I'm missing Ecru. I couldn't find Ecru, but that's another neutral that's in this. I One of these neutrals is used for that back stitching that covers up the whole back of the pattern. So I didn't match. I didn't look at which symbol. I don't, I'm not sure which color it is. You might not need much of that, whatever color that is, if you decide to not do all that half stitching all over. And then this is um, 3777. The, for the, there's a little bit of red in the borders. That's what's going on there. So these, um, floss tags, <laughs> I have a, a paper punch. That's this shape. It's a gift tag shape basically. And I have it because for several years, what I was doing, this is like a long time ago. It's been a long while now when we were trading holiday presents in my family, I would often wrap them in like the brown paper that you get like with grocery bag, you know, brown paper bags from the grocery store. I would use that to wrap gifts. And then I would like either draw or paint designs on them or like wrap them in pretty ribbons um, just to like recycle, use recycled paper. And then I would make my own tags to put on them. So I had that punch from that. And um, now I don't do that so much. Now I do sometimes wrap and wrap in paper, but mostly I have um, a jute printed jute gift bag, like a tote bag for each member of my family. And I put their gifts in that bag and then I take it over for Christmas and then I bring those bags back. So I basically reuse the same gift bag. It's a fabric, like a jute fabric um, gift bag that I reuse every year. So that's kind of, you know, trying to cut back on um, paper and packaging and all that. But anyway, so I still had this gift tag punch. So now I'm, I'm kind of on a little bit of a floss tag making frenzy except the practical side of me is just one like they look pretty and they're gonna be very photogenic part of the practical side of me is wondering well what do you do after the project is done and you're done using it do you I just maybe I collect them and then I see if they fit another project I guess right you just keep reusing them I have a little sticker I put on the back um where I put the color of the DMC. Although the, on this tag, I could have just written directly on it because it's just, it's, it's a light color anyway. Okay. I also did a classic color works conversion for these same colors in case you feel like doing a fancy floss version of it. I, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure yet which one I want to do. I have both. Probably do the fancy floss one just because I have it. Um, so let me show you what that looks like. It'll just take me a second to gather them all up and put them in order. So I do a lot of color conversions and I just, I spend a lot of time looking at pictures of them online and then I just make guesses and I go with what comes up. So um, that's how I achieve this one too. So these are the colors. Now in this one, I was able to find a neutral that goes with Ecru. So I don't have the DMC Ecru, but I have the fancy floss conversion of it. These are all classic color works. Oops. So um, this is how they're going to look on the fabric. I think that's pretty good. That's going to be pretty amazing. Actually, this is what makes me maybe think about doing that half stitching that covers the back because that's a pretty good, these neutrals are a good contrast to my neutral fabric. See that? They still pop out against it. So maybe it'll create an interesting effect to do that half stitching. Now I can't decide. Like I said, it'll be game time decision. Okay, so let's see these, all these color conversions I'm putting in the description below. So if you don't catch it while I'm talking about it right now, you can look at it down there. Um, so this is Classic Color Works Wavy Navy. And the conversion is DMC 3750. This is Classic Color Works Granny Annie. And it's the conversion for DMC 336. These aren't perfectly matching, but they're pretty close. Um, this is Campfire. And it's the conversion for 3777. This one is almost identical. It's just got a little bit, I mean, it's variegated, so. This is Nighty Night. I love this color. It's just like the darkest. It's kind of like DMC, yeah, it's like DMC 823. <laughs> of course it is, that's how I matched it up. Um, 
What's this one? This is Mermaid's Fin. And the conversion is DMC803. Um, they, I'm looking at them now and they all look different. Like I said, it just doesn't show up. My video quality is not super. So you're probably not seeing differences, but they really do look different. This is Lighthouse and it's the conversion for DMC 822. Um, Dulce de Leche. And this is an ident, this is an almost perfect conversion for, um, 3770. They look I almost identical except for the variegation. And then Magnolia Blossom, that's going to be the conversion for Ecru. So like I said, I'll type them below. So in case you're curious, or, you know, if you, if you don't want to splurge too much, you could convert one of the colors. These blue, like what would be a good blue? I think it would be interesting to use um, this Granny Annie instead of DMC 336 because the variegation is very heavy on this one. You're not going to catch it there, I don't think. But it's like a bright blue and a, neat, um, like a deep, deep blue variegated. So that could create some interesting effects. What else is super variegated? Wavy Navy, maybe that's one other one you could try if you just want to experiment with a couple of fancy flosses. Um, Wavy Navy is the conversion for 3750. And that also has like a sort of like a slate blue and a navy blue. It's a 336 or and a 3750 variegated almost. Oh, you can kind of see it there. See how there's like tones of dark blue. Anyway, that was fun to do, a little um, conversion. So I'm pretty excited to start it. I'm going to start this pattern on January 1st, but I welcome you to start it early. If you can kit it up and you're excited and you want to get going on it, go for it. The hashtag is just going to be kind cabal sal, and I'll um, type what it looks like below in case you're not sure how to spell it. And just I, go for it. I, I cannot help myself. I, when I get really excited to start a new project, you know how that I start a lot of things. So if you're excited and you want to start it, start it before me. It doesn't matter. Um, hashtag it so we can see what, um, what you're choosing. I'm sticking with these traditional colors because, um, like I said, ship cloth, Indonesian ship cloths are usually in reds and blues. So I want to stick to that and keep it traditional. Um, but you're, you know, you're welcome to play around with color a little bit and see what you think about that. Um, so Kain Kapal Sal, I think is the hashtag. Yes, that's the hashtag we're going to use on it. Okay. I am also doing a couple of other Sal's. One starts this month and then one I'm start also starting in January. And then we're also going to talk about my Whipgo. I have my Whipgo 2022 board to show you too. Okay. So next plan is the 25 days of rainbows Sal. Hashtag 25 days of rainbows. And this is started by Alicia, who is AC Stitches on Instagram and Kirsten, who is 23 flavors of stitching on Instagram. And they're doing, they're using the after the rain pattern by Liz Matthews. Hello from Liz Matthews. And they're stitching one rainbow a day. It's sort of like a countdown to the new year. I think they're starting on December 1st. Um, I have to double check that, but it's just a series of rainbows. I am not using the called for colors. I am using a palette of all these different pinks and purples that I just picked out from my stash. So let me show them to you. It's all these different, all these different colors and I just love them so much. I just kind of looked through and I thought, what colors appeal to me? What do I want to find myself just looking at over and over again? And I kind of arranged them. This is not the order. I sort of set them up um, in a little bit of an order that transitions from like pink to purple to blue. And I wrote that down on my pattern because what I think I'm going to do is follow that sequence of colors. I love it. <laughs> These colors. Um, I'm going to follow that sequence of colors. So each rainbow is about three colors. So it's the um, inner arc, the middle arc, and the outer arc. So I have the kind of this sequence of colors transitioning from one to another. I ordered them um, in how they would transition from one to another. So I think I'm going to do for each rainbow, I'm going to pick a color 
and then do that color and the next two in sequence so that it'll look like it's kind of, there's a gradient a little bit. That's the plan. <laughs> we'll see how that works. Um, I'm also going to stitch, so like this pattern, it does have a border. It's got like a very thin, just basically like a solid line of um, cross stitches going all the way around it. I think they're cross stitches, I can't tell. Anyway, um, I found a coordinating fancy floss that goes great with it. It's, um, this is Berry Blossoms by Stitchy Stuff Co. on Etsy. And I follow them on Instagram. So of course, when they put this out there, I thought, ooh, this reminds me of my rainbow colors for my um, sale, 25 days of rainbow sale. So that's what I'm gonna use for the border. I'm gonna come all around with this variegated floss and then I'm gonna do the different arcs in those different pinks and purples. So very, very excited to start that one. I'm doing this on um, 18 count chinchilla by Mystic Fabrics. Um, I love this one. This is one from my stash that I picked up from Garon some time ago. And I love it because it looks like sort of a, a stormy sky. So I think it'll go great with a rainbows theme. And it shows off. Let me hold the colors. Like those colors are looking pretty okay on it. So I think they each, like there's no color here that will blend in too much with this fabric. They will all look like they'll stand out. Let me hold it up again and see. See, they all kind of stand out. They look, they'll look a little washed out because my um, camera is washing out the colors a little bit, but they're really bright and lovely and I just love them and I can't wait to start that. So that the pattern is called After the Rain, but the sal is called hashtag 25 days of rainbow sal. And I will link um, both AC Stitches and 23 Flavors of Stitching. I'll put their Instagrams below in case you want to check that out. Kirsten has a floss tube channel. I don't remember if Alicia has one. I need to look. Um, and Kirsten's been doing a lot of videos lately, so I need to catch up on some of those. Okay, I'm doing one more sal um, with Kim from Cataloging My Stitches. We both have had... Actually, I don't know if Kim has hers kitted up, but I had mine kitted up. We both have been wanting to do one of the Fragments in Time series I from Summer House Stitch Works. And I picked out, I kitted up um, the 2018 series at my local needle workshop this summer, Inspired Needle, because I saw model, Nancy, who works there, had done a model stitch. And it was so, so pretty. It was a tribute to her mom. The colors are just bright and cheerful. Um, so I picked up one, two, three. Five, six. They cut it's an eight-part series and they come on little cards like this. So you could stitch them as a small. This is the 2018 series. This is just one motif. I'll walk through the motifs real quick. This is one motif. There are eight of them, but there were two that I wasn't crazy about, so I only got six. We haven't even gotten to my favorite one yet. I'll show you my the last one's gonna be my favorite one. That's like a tree of some kind, and then check this bird just so cute. I love it. Those bright, cheerful colors. So um, Kim is doing a different one. It's either the 2019 or the 2017 series. So there's a different series that comes out each year, but it's the same setup where it's like these little parts to it. And hers, she had talked about it in an older video. It's um, It's got like shaker motifs in it and she has some shaker heritage in her family. So it's kind of a tribute to her family. Mine isn't a tribute to anything. It's just, I really like it. So <laughs> Maybe I can make mine a tribute to my mom too, like Nancy did with hers. Um, because I think my mom would like, these colors are sort of bright and cheerful. So maybe that that's what I'll do. Aren't these dreamy colors? This is um, Current by The Gentle Art. These are all the called for colors. Antique Rose, uh, also Gentle Art. This is Classic Color Works. It's Mint Julep. My mom loves these kind of, She's like me. We both like those sort of tealy blue, watery blue colors. Um, toffee. That's a very pretty, it's like a, like a yellowy golden yellow. It's a very pretty color. Toffee. And then uh, ribbon red. Just a bright red. This basically looks like, really, this is like DMC 321. Do they offer DMC conversion? They don't. These The stitch count on each of these is 51 by 51. So it's really, it's doable. Actually, this would be, I was thinking about making these separate smalls to make another cross stitch journal. 
but I don't know if I'll do that. Nancy had stitched them all like four motifs on top and four on bottom, one big piece. It looked really beautiful. And then the fabric I picked out there as well was this, it's ballet slipper. You're not going to see any color in this. It's like a, the palest, palest peachy pink um, ballet slipper by Fox and Rabbit. It's a 36 count linen. And it's just like a, a pale neutral, basically. So all of these colors will look fine on there. So that's what I went with. So Kim is Kim and I both just want to start at the same time. We don't have a hashtag for it um, because there are already hashtags out there. There's like, for example, for the 2018 series, it's the hashtag fragments in time 2018. So I don't know. We're still figuring out. Do we want to use the hashtags that are already out there and just each tag the year that we're working on? Or do we want to make our own like a fragments sale or something like that? You're welcome to join in if you want to join us on that. It'd be fun to see what everybody's doing, like which year they pick up. I really like the there's another one that has another series, fragments in time series that has like these mustardy yellows with dark blues I want to say it's like the 2017 series. That one's really pretty too. So that's another sell. So I technically have a couple of new starts, right? That I have planned between the 25 days of rainbows and I'm starting this month and then kind Kapal in January, fragments in time in January. Um, but other than that, I want next year to really be focusing on whips. So that's why I want to show you my whip go board 2022 so i created a whip go board for this year 2021 and then i very quickly abandoned it like in early spring i don't even know if i made it through the winter just because i was on a basically like starting marathon i started everything this year well now i have a whole ton of whips and i want to chip away at them so um i am hoping to stick to my whip go 2022 so let's talk about that so what i'm going to try to do is superimpose over me here a picture of my board and then I'll just tell you about my board. So I'm going to pull it up here on my computer so I can see it but hopefully you're looking at a picture um, that I'm putting up here. So this template is from a blog called um, Serendipity Stitching and I just googled whip go boards and this one came up. So this is the one I kind of modeled it off of that. I'm using a google sheet it's basically like the online version of a Excel sheet. So if you're more comfortable with, with Excel, you can use Excel. And I'm putting a link to this below in my description. So if you um, you know want to make a copy of it, actually, I'll set it up. It, with any Google Doc, if you remove the, at the very end of a link, it will say edit. But if you remove that edit and put the, replace it with the word copy and then share that link, whoever you share it with, it'll be for, it's forcing them to make a copy. So I may put the copy link below so you can make a copy. Um, so to make this board, um, or no, to think about what I wanted to put on this board, I actually rewatched Jesse Marie. We all know Jesse Marie, right? Jesse does stuff on, um, floss tube and Instagram. And this is of course her idea. I rewatched some of her old videos just to get a refresher on like what she gets out of Whipgo, um, you know, ways that it works for her. And that's how I decided how I was going to make mine. My big goal for next year is to try to finish one medium to large sized piece because everything I finished this year was small. It, I didn't tackle any larger projects. So I chose five of them that I, I really wanted to chip away at and I repeated them over and over again on my board. So the first one is um, by Jan Hicks. It's her Narnia pattern, which is based on like a wardrobe that she saw the intricate patterns on a wardrobe. I'll see. I don't know if my video editor will let me superimpose a picture um, of each of these patterns above whatever I'm putting the Whipco board. If not, I'll try to put it in somewhere else in the video. Um, so that I put um, I put that into my Whipco board. But what I did was I only chose five projects and I put those five in multiple times. So Jan Hicks by Narnia, I put it in my board five different times. So this coming year in 2022, I hope to spend 25 days chipping away at that. And I'm hoping that that 25 days will be enough to, if not finish it, get me really close, like unbelievably close to finishing it. So the second one I picked was Ink Circles, um, Squirrels of Sumatra. That one I haven't touched since I first picked it up. So uh, another 25 days on that one. Um, 
Ink Circle's Turkish Delight. I'm really, really close to finishing that one. I, I think I have either a third of it or a quarter of it left. So Whipco is going to help me. I have That's why I, I put it on the middle row here, the middle column. So I only have 20 days total on that. I have it on the board four times, basically. Um, it's space number three, eight, 18, and 23. I'm, because I am a lot more close to finishing that one, I don't think I'm going to need as many visits with that one to finish it. Next one is um, by Galliana Designs. I have to double check if I've spelled Galliana correctly. But anyway, it's the bookcase, the um, the New Year bookcase style, you know, that Shiloh at Cross Stitch MD and Beth, um, Desert Stitcher. Um, they started that in January. I started it and then I've restarted it and I love my restart. I just never go back to it. So I want to go back to that one. That's on there five times. And then Huga Sampler. It's by Patterns Cross Stitch on Etsy. It's a really pretty Scandinavian inspired um, design. Lots of different motifs. That one I put on here because I want to make it a, a gift stitch for my sister. And it is surprising. It takes a long time because it looks samplery in that it's got all these different motifs on it, but each of those motifs is full coverage. They're all filled in. So it takes a long, long time to do. Plus there's a lot of motifs. I have an idea for that one where I want to finish it, frame it for my sister. And then I have this book um, in mind that I want to get her about, like, it's got ideas for how to hygge your house. Like hygge is a Danish word. It means like cozy, increasing coziness and warmth in your, in your home through interactions with people, but also through like the atmosphere that you set. So I want to get her that book and then stitch her a Stitchy Stars bookmark to match that book cover um, and then gift her the stitched I, the stitched piece too, just for like a just because I don't have a, you know, it's not a birthday gift or anything like that. It's just a just because um, like a Maybe I'll make it a little self-care package for her or something like that. By the way, that Stitchy Stars pattern, bookmark pattern, that's another great way to, to um, make it a gift. If you have a reader in your life and you want to get them a gift, look at the artwork on the color of the book and then make your bookmark match the, the colors that are on that. So it kind of coordinates with the book that you give them. That's kind of what I'm thinking of doing with this Huga book um, and then stitching a bookmark for her. So those are the five pieces I've picked out and I, I wanted to just keep coming back to those five and really, really chip away at them instead of putting a whole bunch of different ones and barely making any progress. I really, really, really want to try to finish these. Um, I picked out some colors that I would use to change like as the numbers get called and as I stitch on them, I would change the colors um, to mark my progress. And then I have on the side where it says remainder replacements, what that means is like, for example, Turkish delight. I really don't have a whole lot left on that pattern. So let's say it, it gets called once and then it gets called again. And then I finish it on that second time that it's called. Well, it still shows up on my board two more times. So instead of like, it doesn't make sense to pull it back up. Once it gets called for the third time, I would replace those remaining instances with another whip. So those are the ones that I have lined up. Um, Cirque des Coeurs by Ink Circles. And then I have a Diorina Bordurin pattern. It's a vlect work. It's like a ribbons, interlacing ribbons pattern. Um, and then this year's um, Linens and Threads um, sampler, the Talavera. I love that one. I never go back to it. So that's, that's on the list too. And then um, I have my reward. So I'm really, really trying to not start anything new next year. I want to chip away at these at my whips list. It's enormous. And um, the only time I really want to start something new, besides, of course, my stitch alongs that I've told you about today, I'm going to reward myself if I finish, if I finish a project, not just meet the goal, but if I actually finish it, like it's ready to frame, then I get to try a new start. And, um, <laughs> you know, because my priorities are in order, I'm already starting to kit up my rewards. <laughs> so um, let me show you what I have for that, for my um, reward stitches. Okay, so I have three <laughs> new start rewards. This is ridiculous to even be talking about, like for my, anyway, we're going there. 
oh, you're in for a treat for this one because so it's Sarah, my stitchy friend, Sarah, who is also a designer. She's mod cross on Etsy and she's got some lovely patterns. And there's one I've been eyeing forever. It's, it's her marigold pattern and it is beautiful. I'll try to put a picture up somewhere. Um, it's right away when I saw it, I thought, gosh, this is gorgeous because it's very watercolory to me. I love doing watercolors. It's been a long time since I've done them, but like there's beautiful gradients from like different oranges and yellows in this pattern. It is so, so pretty. And I've been holding off on kitting it up because my idea for it was to stitch it on a dark green, like a dark, dark fabric so that all that brightness would pop out and it would almost look like you're looking down at the plant, like all the green leaves around it and then the flowers flower popping out. That's kind of the idea I had. And then total enabler, Matt, MBC stitcher, like every time he shows his stash, I'm like, pause, go look for this. He showed a really beautiful picture this plus fabric called Woodland. Is it called Woodland? Let me check. Yeah, I think it's called Woodland. It doesn't have the full name on here. He held this up. And the second I saw it, I thought that's what I'm using for Sarah's project. It's the darkest green I've been able to find. And I've been looking and looking and looking for a dark green. So this is just perfect for it. And check some of these colors. So I don't have all, it's it's eight colors of DMC that are called for for it. And they're so bright and sunny and beautiful. And I don't have, them all, have all of them yet, but I can show you the few that I have and just look at how they look on this fabric. So these are the colors. <laughs> That's so pretty. It's just so bright and fiery. I love it. Marigolds are such a beautiful flower. And this actually makes me want to read more about them because I feel like lots of different cultures use marigolds. Like we're, we use them in India. Like I've seen them in like flower gardens and they're used for ceremonial purposes. I don't really know anything about the symbolism behind them. I know they're a big like um, they were in cocoa. So I know it's a Day of the Dead thing. I mean, the no self-control side of me wants to like start this today, <laughs> but no, it's going to be a special, special day when I, oh gosh, look at how that looks. It's just so dreamy. It's going to be a special day when I start this. It will be the marking of something completed and like a special start to it. So that's what's happening here. That's my first um, kind of kitted up. Oh, this is probably the best view of it here you're going to get. I love it. I can't wait to find the other colors too. It's eight colors of DMC and I have these three here like this kind of red orange, this orange, and then this gold and yellow. So, so pretty. I cannot wait to start that one. It's taking me like all of my strength to not start it because I basically, I have enough to get me going, to get me going on it, but no. Self-control. Okay, next one we're talking about rewards for my whip go that I haven't even tackled yet. So the next one is Owl Forest. You know, they get me every time. So they have that beautiful, like pretty recent, like within the past few months, that turtle Quaker that came out, I'll throw a picture of it up. And I've been looking, looking at that. So I did get the digital pattern and which was, by the way, was only like $4 and 50 cents. Um, you can buy di the digital versions of patterns from them. They're pretty affordable. So if you've been eyeing an owl forest, but are anxious about like the threads and the shipping and the cost of the paper patterns, you could go digital on it. Their digital patterns are really nice. You, um, they give you color and black and white versions. Um, I like PDF anyway, because you can kind of expand it out and make it larger size to really see it well. So, and I don't have anything to show you today because I don't have the fabric picked out yet. I only have it picked out in my mind, um, but it's a beautiful fabric by Be Stitch Me. And I have to look up what color it is, but it's some, it's got like an oceany name to it. And I'm waiting on it. One, because this is a reward stitch and I don't deserve to shop for a reward stitch yet, but two, because I actually in September, I think, or maybe early October, I ordered my first Be Stitch Me, probably from watching Matt and BC Stitcher. He he shows off beautiful. He gets the box that Be Stitch Me does boxes, so he gets the 
fabrics that come in the seasonal boxes. But anyway, I ordered a Be Stitch Me fabric on 18 count Ada to use for one of for something I'm restarting, one of my whips that I've set aside designated as a restart. And I'm curious, it hasn't come yet because they, those are made to order and they tell you right up front, like it's going to take 10 to 12 weeks basically. So I'm anticipating hopefully by the end of December, maybe it'll come. Um, but I'm curious because everything I've seen on floss tube so far is the linens from Be Stitch Me and they are stunningly gorgeous, but I haven't seen any 18 count Ada yet. And 18 count Ada doesn't take to dye as well. So I want to see what that one, when that one eventually comes, I want to see what it looks like. And if the color is good on it, the modeling is good on it, then I will pick out, I want to say it's like an ocean tide or something. I don't remember. But anyway, I did pick out, it looks like sort of, um, if you're looking at the ocean water washing up on a beach and you know, like the frothy bits, that's what it looks like. It's got like blue with kind of white marbling on it. It's really pretty. And I thought that would look good with turtles on there. And then, you know, I have written down a list of all the color and cotton colors. I've charted it out for color and cotton or um, kitted, not kitted. What am I looking for? I've done the color conversions to color and cotton by looking at the picture of what the thread pack looks like on Owl Forest's website and just kind of making matches. So I have it all picked out what I want to do. I just don't have it kitted up yet. So that's happening. And then my third reward stitch, am I even going to finish one? We'll see. It's, you know, it's an ink circles. It's circular logic by ink circles. So this has been sitting in my stash since the summer. I love, I love me and ink circles and the called for colors on this are really pretty. But what I found on the pictures for ink circles is that looking at the threads in person for the called for colors don't always sync up with what it looks like in the picture. So I tend to use my own colors for ink circles patterns and I'm just going to, I'll use something in stash. I'm basically going to find kind of like um, for the big circles around the outlines, I'm going to do some kind of solid color and then some kind of bright variegated color for the motifs, the geometric bits on the inner parts. But I'll, I have stuff in stash I can use for that. So, hey, my rewards are taken care of. Now I just have to stitch my whips and chip away at this stuff. Um, I am not showing any of my whip go like the selections I've made for Wicko, I'm not actually showing you those projects now because that will be the first thing I show you in my December video. It's going to be a whip parade. And I have like, I have an unmanageable list of whips. It's like 80 whips or something like that. So that will be, I'm organizing them right now in the order that I want to show them to you. So that will be the first thing I'll show you my Wipco pieces right at the front of that. I didn't pull them out for today. Um, Anything else I want to say about that? Oh, if I'm going to take a second right here in case I couldn't put up the pictures of my five pieces from Whipgo, I'm going to try to put them up here. Those again were um, Narnia, sorry, by Jan Hicks. Um, Squirrels of Sumatra, that was by Ink Circles. Um, my Turkish Delight, also by Ink Circles. <laughs> um, the Bookcase by Galliana. And then um, the Huga Sampler by Patterns Cross Stitch. So just in case I haven't up to this point been able to embed those pictures, I wanted to have a spot where I put them in so you could see what those look like. Well, that leaves us with one last thing, which is our giveaway for this month. So I am giving away patterns from another fantastic um, Etsy cross-stitch designer. Let me just make sure, have I done everything? Yeah, we've done everything else. Okay. This is from a designer on Etsy who I just lo I love so much for her seasonal stitching. It's Catherine, the fantastic Catherine. She's such a nice person. She's Mama Witch X Stitch. And um, a lot of people have been stitching her patterns. They're so cute and adorable. They have so many like tiny details that you only really notice when you're looking closely at the pattern. Beautiful patterns. And um, I reached out to Catherine to see if she would be okay with it. So, okay, I'll put a picture <laughs> There's a pattern that came out recently of these like ridiculous frogs. It's called Good Hunt. And these it's just these um, frogs clowning around. They have little Santa's hats on. And it's just super cute. So I picked that one up and I messaged Catherine to ask if it would. I, I, I did the same with Anna with the last giveaways. 
um, and with Era too, with the last giveaways, I just want to make sure the vendor, especially for digital patterns, is okay with me buying a second copy that I can give away. And Catherine was very sweet about it. She said, oh yes, definitely. And because you're doing that, because you're talking about the shop on your channel, let me also send you two more patterns to give away. So um, I have one copy of each of the following patterns to give away. So let me give you the keyword and I'll put a picture up somewhere. And then um, if you're interested for one or any of them, many, whatever you want to do, use these keywords. Please make sure if you've already filled out my Google form, which is linked below, that just gives me your contact info so that if you're a winner, I know where to send everything. And that I don't share that with anybody or anything. It's just there. I haven't even looked at it <laughs> from the last time people filled stuff out. I only look at it to look for your email address to send you if you win something. Um, please don't share these. If you if you do win one, you know, it's copyrighted and it's it's been set aside for you, the winner, and that's it. And then um, please don't mention giveaway or anything related to giveaway. Please be 18 or older. Please be a subscriber. Okay. So I will put a picture up again. I'm going to give away one copy that I bought, an extra copy of Good Hunt. So the keyword for this is going to be frog. The keyword is frog for that one. Second one I'm giving away, um, it's just one of each of these. I'm giving away a pattern. It's called Magic Feeling. It's very cute. It's like a winter scene with these two foxes. So the keyword for that is going to be fox. Third one, that was donated by Catherine. And then the third one, um, Catherine donated this one as well. It's called Merry and Bright. Super adorable pattern with this like <laughs> Santa with big eyes on it. Steve and I just love to look at these patterns. Like I show them to Steve and we both get a kick out of them. Anyway, keyword on this is Santa. So frog, fox, Santa. Those are the keywords. Um, like I said, please don't mention giveaway or anything related to giveaway. Please use the keyword. Please be a subscriber. Please, if you haven't already, give me your contact info using the Google form. Um, please be 18 or older. So, um, and please um, buy something from Mama Witch X Stitch because um, it's not easy being a designer, um, especially of digital patterns and kind of marketing yourself. And her patterns are just so original and cute. They're very charming. I already found another one. She did one recently that I want. It's like a pumpkin with kind of an angry face and it has a crow on it. That one's super cute. She does a beautiful job with um, choosing DMC colors that variegate within motifs. Like her, all of her tree and leaf motifs are just gorgeous. And she always has like these tiny surprises in there. Like fo um, the magic feeling pattern with that, the two foxes, there's a little puppy in there with a little hat on. I don't know. She has like, like pretty birds. Around. She's got a lot of tiny details that are just really adorable. So That'd be a fantastic designer to support. Not every designer on Etsy is reliable. So for, oh gosh, I hate to end on this note, but I'm going to put it in. Please be careful with Happy Mood Point, who I personally have recommended before, and I feel terrible about that. It, lots of stitchers have reached out to me basically saying that a lot of her motifs are copied. And so you just got to be careful with that. I don't know. I don't think I know enough yet about patterns to identify, but now that people have pointed it out to me, it's like, oh yeah, that's taken directly from a Lilo studio that's directly from a long dog that so it's not every designer is unique and creative and reliable reliably um you know not stealing patterns from other people not um plagiarizing patterns so Catherine and mama witch x stitch is absolutely very creative and original with her works i hope i'm always i'm almost afraid to make recommendations now because you never know what direction people are going to take but anyway we're done. That's it. Wish me good luck on my gift stitching on snow and love because that's that's what I'll be working on the next couple weeks until I wrap that up. And I really hope you join in on Kind Cup also. I think that would be fun to, to see what everybody's doing with that and kind of encourage each other to keep it up each month. And then um, if you have any questions on anything like the bookmark I made or any of the colors I used or fabric combos, just... Um, you know, drop me a line in the comments. You can find me on Instagram too. And I hope everyone had a, a good holiday. I had a real great holiday this, this, um, these past few days. I had nice visits with my family and I hope you did too and stay safe. And we're going to check in in another month. And um, I think that's it. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Have a good day and a good weekend and happy stitching. I'll see you soon.